going on my friends? Dustin Stelzer with Electrician U. So as promised in the last video I did where I covered NECA, my first time ever going to the National Electrical Contractors Association convention, uh, I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of like insight on some of the cool tools that I saw. So first up is Greenlee. I had to stop at the Greenlee booth, of course. Um, the big thing that really impressed me is they have insulated battery powered tools now. How's it going? Good, how are you? Doing great. Awesome. What do you have to show off at NECA? We have the world's very first insulated battery tool. Uh, so for crimping and cutting, so super high forces that you're gonna be using with, uh, with hydraulic battery tools, micro hydraulic battery tools. We've got a test rig over here that is 10,000 volts VDC. Okay. <laughs> so first thing I want you to do is, Dustin, is I'm going to turn this on, and so you're going to create a, a circuit. All right. Right. So you want to touch the bottom on the bottom on the bottom, top on top. All right. So if you pull it down just a little bit, you can yeah, see the arc. See it arcing. So I'm going to take the top. And I don't want to see anything. I want this to be very, very anticlimactic. Yeah. Right? So basically, this barrier that we've now developed is blocking 10,000 volts from getting from the head down to the base. So, Dustin, you can take our test strip again, show them it's still working. There it goes. So, up to 10,000 volts you have protection if you are using something um, and you're not gonna be making contact between two metal points with a tool. Now, you could still get electrocuted, not gonna lie there. You still need to wear PPE and all that, but it's just another layer of protection. I thought that was really cool. The other thing that they had was uh, what they're calling a no hands puller. It's a pull assist machine. So really, if you're hooking anything up to conduit and you are like above a ceiling grid or really anything, it's this huge puller that can that has a motor on it. And they simulated like a 2000 pound load when I was there and showed like how this thing would pull. Um, so that's one of their new tools I thought was really impressive. Next up was ABB. ABB had a few different things that they were doing. Um, one of them, they're doing a, a whole new series of fittings that are all stainless steel and stuff that are, are for like kitchen grade equipment. I didn't realize this, but ABB actually owns Carlon. So a lot of the plastic boxes that you use, you know, the blue boxes that we nail on in, in residential environments, that's owned by them. Most of the metal, you know, 1900 boxes and bracket boxes and, th and things, they'll, stay, they'll say Steel City on the inside. They own Steel City as well, so ABB was part of that. They just kind of showed a lot of the, the uh, prefab stuff that they have. You can actually get a whole bunch of prefabbed uh, things based off of a certain job if you're doing a job and you need like a, um, a whole bunch of boxes on brackets at a specific size and um, they can kind of prefab a job for you and you can order that through your distributor. So I thought that was really cool as well. Next up was DeWalt. So the thing that I thought was the coolest, just most relevant to me, was the cable tray cutter. There's a brand new cable tray cutter that's coming in the beginning of 2022. First thing, made in the USA, real important. Right. It is a um, all mechanical tool. There's no hydraulics in here at all. Okay. Um, it has a rotating head. You'll see why that's useful in a minute. The head itself, the cutter can cut about 10,000 cuts. See okay. that? Change it out real quickly with a couple of hex bolts there. Nice. Nice paddle trigger. What we're trying to do here is just make this job a bunch simpler. You know, you've got people out there using um, grinders, snips, all kinds right. of things to cut these Flaring things. up stuff yeah. in their yeah. face. So let me just sh sh show you real quick. It's a question of putting it in. I'll reset it, putting it in. And that's it. I can rotate the head if I want to cut this area out here. <laughs> that's so efficient. Put oh your finger God. on that. What do you feel? It's not hot and it's not sharp. Exactly. That's the biggest thing that we, we've worked hard on is there's no burr. They had a couple other things there, like there was uh, some um, things that fasten onto some of their tools that can track tools. So if you have tools in an area, it can actually, through a phone app um, or through this technology that they put together, can track all of the tools around. So it's a really good thing for theft or just tracking where tools are. So this is going to be our new asset management system, uh, okay. site manager. So it's a uh, 
web-based or cloud-based. It's going to be you're going to have a website, you're going to have a mobile app. The most important thing with Site Manager, uh, I believe, is going to be our asset gateway here. So okay. what this will do is basically scan uh, anywhere from up to an hour or every hour or twice a day and connect with all the Bluetooth technology tools that are within about 100, 150 feet. Okay. So it's a great addition to this. Makes is it things only very things that have sensors that's fixed to them or is it all DeWalt tools that have that uh, that like wireless connect? Yeah, so any any DeWalt tool, will you can connect with this okay. or you can add this tag to any tool, any product out there automatically will get scanned by that and our all engine. that information goes directly back into our system basically what this does it just replaces your phone okay that's really cool yes and that's the great thing about dewalt and their bluetooth technology is that we want to give our customers multiple solutions yeah so you can add this to the bottom of the drill you can ship ready you can do a tag oh this is a whole module that you just add in that's another piece of bluetooth Whoa. Tape that just goes on the bottom of, a, of a, any existing 20 volt dewalt tool slide that on the bottom slide the battery underneath it the battery charges that device instantly makes that that device that tool Bluetooth, right? <laughs> you got it matched. That's so cool. The last stop that we made was Schneider. So Schneider, um, I'm always looking to see what Schneider's doing. They're just like innovating the crap out of everything materials wise. Um, so first thing that they had that, that I noticed was there's these new breaker handles. So a lot of the molded cased uh, circuit breakers that are out there used to have like these really skinny handles that you would have to try to flip and it was like it was a pain in the butt to try to flip them so they added these new um, kind of like blocks on the ends of their handles which make it so much easier to flip their handles and they made them so that there's an indicating light on them so if they trip it'll actually sit and blink at you so if you're in a dark room and you just see this little bit of flashing you know exactly where to go if you're in a huge facility with tons of breakers everywhere I find that is incredibly helpful they also have a thing called Flex Set, which is a basically it's pre-manufactured switchboards. So you get this huge, you know, uh, panel board switchboards inside of enclosures. They worked with UL to be able to list this as something that's a modular system. So whereas before you would have to like have an entire switchboard brought in, already spec'd, built, put together, and then you install it, this is a way for you to order what you need, get an enclosure, get all of the busing figured out, get all the breakers figured out, and you still can have a UL listing while installing and building the entire thing yourself. All right, so this is Flexset, uh, which is a product and a program. And let's talk about some more stuff on the, on the, on the product side here. So when you, so, the, the swing out main is like this. So what you see also is that the busing has been completely redesigned. When you, if you're familiar with the, with other switchboards, including the Q82, usually you see the busing running through the back, right? You have a through bus assembly, all your phases in the back of the of the of the switchboard, exposed essentially. In here, we have now enclosed it, right? So you see here the system of completely enclosed busing that is stacked. So all your phases are stacked in here. And all the busing connections that are critical for, for, the, for the operation and for the functionality and safety and quality of the product, all the busing connections now have Visi tight bolts, right? What this does is assures mechanically and visually the torque setting of the busing connection. So That's once great. we are torquing this connection, once it has reached the specific torque setting that is required, this mechanical piece here will break, break off and this flag will fly off. And that says you have reached the torque setting that you so require. So you don't even have to rely on a tool to tell you this tells you itself. You don't, but we also took another step. <laughs> <laughs> of course you did. <laughs> so what we have done, there's, a, there's a, a, an app that's called Flexset Build. And this app has actually a digital torque, a digital torque wrench that is synchronized with the app. And the app is the part of the program, as I mentioned, part of the digital backbone. The tool and the app are synchronized. So when you get to the point where you're getting to these torque settings, the, the app knows the value that it's expecting for that specific connection. So it knows the torque settings for this part, it knows the torque setting for this part, it knows the torque setting for every single thing you're gonna have to torque in this. And it programs the tool that it, it, it basically says now, you, oh, you need this at 60 foot pounds. It programs the tool and now the tool, when it reaches that torque, tells the app, tells the operator with a haptic feeling, right? It, it, it trembles. It says, okay, you reach the torque, and it says you have, you have reached the torque for that assembly, you can go to the next step. So it does not allow you to 
build this thing wrong yeah. because it has to follow the right steps and the right requirements for that step. This is a 3D model and showing how the product works. And here's that part that I just described about. See the telescoping bridge right there comes out or comes on. And then once you torque that, it basically connects both the load side of the main and it, it, it feeds the feeder section here so that the eye line is now powered all in one move. That's great. So what usually takes a day, half a day for them to do all the splicing on that, it's now done in five minutes. They also had a couple of trailers there, so they were showing off. They have uh, this energy center that is really for microgrid usage, um, but there's a screen and technology and software that goes with it and it can figure out where to pull power from if you have multiple different power sources. So if you're on gen sets, you know, generators, if you're on battery power, if you're on solar, utility, things like that, um, it can figure out what to pull from where, when like load shedding needs to happen, it can switch over power. Just a really, really intelligent piece of hardware and software that work together. So that's what they won the competition. Everybody at this entire event put a uh, their series of tools in into this kind of middle ring and they all got to enter whatever they thought was gonna win the showstopper. So this is what won. Energy this control. is the thing that won, right? Yeah, yeah yep. I saw that. I got to see everybody's products out there. Yep, so this is a, the smallest version of what we do, but thinking microgrid. Okay. This is this is a step in that direction. Um, this is kind of a condensed down version. So when you're bringing multiple multiple sources in, you're you've got your you know your your solar, you've got a generator, and how you're going to control that? When what's more important? When right? Yeah. This is the logic behind it. You got to choose and 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 really talk about um, load shedding as well. Where hey, maybe I. If I don't have enough power coming in, I'm used all my battery power. Yeah. I've got to eliminate some loads that I don't care about as yeah. much about to, to do the rest of it. So this is, this is really neat. Um, you can maybe get the sound of it, but we'll see if we go. So these all control, uh, all these breakers are electrically operated and electrically controlled. And so you can see things are switching out yeah. if, you, if you lost your power. And now it's, <laughs> it's showing up there. So. That's so cool. Yeah. Um, and then lastly, we have Klein. I covered a lot of these before, but the, my favorite stuff from Klein, it's gotta be the hard hat with the fans. <laughs> like in Texas, 105 degrees, 110 degrees every day, having a hard hat on sucks, especially if you're in a room with no airflow and you're up near like a, you know, uh, the top of a building up on a scissor lift and you got that sun just beating down on the metal and you're like right underneath it, it's so hot. You just flip this fan on and it blows cool air down your neck. Oh, it's such a brilliant thing. So that's the fast fly through of the entire event. Uh, that should have been 900 more things that should have made this video because I stopped at a lot of booths. There was a lot of cool stuff. Next year, it's going to be in Austin. Y'all come to my hood, come to Austin and check it out. I will definitely be there and uh, I'm going to try to cover a little bit more in depth, maybe do some live videos and stuff like that. But thank you guys so much for watching. As always, I appreciate your attention. Um, please make sure that you subscribe to the channel down there. Hit the little subscribe button. If you watch these videos, it super helps me out. Um, like this video if you liked this video. Check Discord out, link in the description below. Join the Facebook group if you're more of like the Facebook group kind. So join them. Love you crazy people. Thank you so much for everything and I'll see you in the next one. Best can to use it and video.